Thank you very much. Um, let me take you across the Atlantic Ocean over to Africa. I would like to share with you our greatest um, conservation success stories that is ever told. Um, for the last five, five years or so, uh, much of the talks in African conservations has been focusing on poaching crisis that were facing African elephants and rhinos. In Namibia, we also had the same crisis. But this has actually forced us to approach conservation from a different angle. We tried to approach conservation by trying to involve communities for them to be involved in the, in the whole agenda of conservation. Because we knew communities that are living with, pro, with wildlife, they, they have more solution than us that are living far away from wildlife. The photo you see in the picture there is of my father. He was one of the top poachers in Namibia. But then he became, he was transformed, he became one of the best community ranger. And that has actually laid the foundation for community engagement. What you see on the side here is skulls of rhinos that were poached. The only thing that we could really use to detect how many rhinos were poached in that, during that time was to collect whatever we come across in the field. By then we knew how many we collected, then we knew how many were actually uh, poached during the period. After independence, our national government changed policies and laws and granted our communities the right to manage use and benefit from wildlife. Uh, today we can proudly say that um, through this process it has actually paved way for the creation of community communal conservancies. Today we have over 82 conservancies across the entire country. These are all conservancies which you see here the green area and they cover an area over 165 uh, uh, square kilometers. We have a total population of um, just over 190,000 people that are living in conservancy area. As a result of communities engagement in conservation, we have seen a drastic increase in wildlife. The lions, as we all know, it's not very easy to live with lions. I mean, it's not, you, don't, you don't want to have a lion next door with, with little kids, but lions, as a result of community getting involved, the lion's population have increased to the point that they started moving from a Tosa, this is a Tosa National Park, and in the middle here, this is where the community are living, this is where we have community conservation area. They started moving freely from one park to another, crossing through community conservation area. Basically, we have helped extend the conservation landscape. Um, I always said that we somehow also became a victim of our own success. Um, with the increase in lion populations, we also started experiencing the increase in human wildlife conflict. But um, if you talk to some of the local people, they will say, ah, lion is like a problem child. <laughs> Normally you would find a way to deal with that one. So let's find a way to deal with lions as long as we need it thing that we need to coexist with us. Um, animals like rhinos that were almost at the blink of extinction in 1980. Today we can proudly say that we have the largest free roaming black rhino population in the world outside national parks. So what I'm talking about now is what is happening outside protected area. Elephants also around the same period, we have uh, less than 7,000 elephants across the regions, to, across the whole country. Today we have over 22,000 elephants in Namibia. So, basically what our community conservation program have done is actually to tend 
Watlaf into economic asset for the communities. Um, today, our communities through Watlaf are heavily engaged in tourism related activities. And uh, they are also looking at many other aspects and many other ways to generate income for their own benefits through conservation. Since the beginning of the programs, from the time when the first conservancies were created, we have seen a steady increase in finances. In 2016 alone, the program generated over uh, 10 million US dollars. And conservancy programs in itself, uh, it is contributing heavily to our net national income. And all this money that are being generated doesn't go to government coffers. It goes to communities, institutions. Based on a cumulative um, investment of 1.9 billion Namibian dollars, our national programs has also generated a cumulative net national income contribution of five billions, which is equivalent to an internal economic rate of return of six, 16 percent. To me, this is a, a completely a positive uh, um, economic return for the program investment. Now that we have all this wonderful thing that we have done in Namibia. I know that Namibia is not known to many countries. It's a very small thing. Um, now that we have done all these things, we, we are really now looking forward and to see what can we do next? How can we take the, what we have done in conservation and apply it in other fields, such as community forest, such as, as fisheries, that will also add value to the local communities that are living alongside this um, landscape. We are also of the opinion that um, even though that we have now created and have seen a great change in conservation in this whole area, it's our moral obligations as supporting institutions and government to continue rendering the necessary support to this institution for them to become um, a robust, meaningful, and relevant, and to continue doing the good work of conserving wildlife. We are also trying to see that community conservation areas are going to increase their revenue tremendously for the members that are living alongside wildlife to see the real benefit of having wildlife around them. Finally, I normally say that um, we can say we were successful in Namibia. Um, but I think there were two things that went very well. One of them was that we have a good policy framework. We had the political will, support. Second thing was that community themselves, they were willing. It wasn't a, something that was forced onto them that you must have conservancies. They willingly wanted to live with animals. They also wanted to make sure that they benefit from wildlife. And the, the third was basically the incentive, the income. So that, these were the driver of the successes that we are facing in Namibia today. I normally used to call it the best conservation package, the three packs, policy framework, community willingness, and incentive. So, I think whoever want to do that, I think this is the beginning where we should really start from. And I would really like to thank the organizer. Thank you very much.